All right, I want you to turn to two scriptures today, as we always do. Matthew chapter 5, verse 2, we'll begin there. And then we're going to get to John 15, 18 in just a few moments. So turn to John 15, 18, put a marker there, and in just a few minutes we're going to get to that. But Matthew 5, 2 is where we will start in just a moment, okay? Uh, today, the title of the message is the Process Series. It's the last message in this series, and the title is Be Happy Through the Process. Be happy. So this is going to be a happy message today. Be happy through the process. Now, if you were, uh, I see some people that are already here today in the first service, and they're going, yeah, right. Today I'm going to show you that this is what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to be happy as we embrace the process of faith and walk it out in our daily lives. No matter what we go through, no matter how difficult it may be at times, the Lord wants us to be happy. This is his will for our lives. Somebody say amen. amen. How many of you like to be happy? How many would rather be happy than sad? Come on. Amen. Yes. I'm about to read to you the beginning of the greatest sermon ever preached. No, it's not one of mine. All right. I thought I'd get more laughs than that. Scratch that joke off. It's called the Beatitudes. It's Jesus' first sermon on the Sermon on the Mount. It's the Beatitudes. And the Be- and let me, I'm going to say this to you. Listen to me closely. The Beatitudes are not the hopes of Jesus. They're not the wishes of Jesus. Okay? In other words, Jesus is not wishing that the poor in spirit could be happy. He's not wishing that those who mourn would be happy. He's not wishing that the persecuted would be happy. These are divine pronouncements of truth come on say amen Amen. these are divine pronouncements of truth jesus being divine is pronouncing pronouncing that this is what will happen this is what will happen okay how many know the word of god is truth absolute truth okay so when jesus said you will be happy in these circumstances he means it okay so matthew 5 2 Jesus is speaking, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, blessed. All right, let me just stop right there. For those of you who don't know, many of you already do, but that word blessed in the Greek is the word makarios. Everybody say makarios. Okay, makarios is the Greek word, and that word actually means happy. That's what it means. The Greek definition of the word makarios is happy, okay? Why they translated it in some versions as blessed, I don't know. But there are others you'll see it say happy. So I'm going to read it with that word being uh, the word for, for blessed, makarios, okay? Happy. Here we go. Happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Happy are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Happy are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Happy are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Happy are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Happy are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Happy are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Amen. I am only going to focus on this last beatitude today. I'm only going to spend some time on that. We'll talk briefly about the others, but really I'm going to focus on the last beatitude. Happy are the persecuted. Happy are the persecuted. So with that, i got to get right into this, so I have three happy points, okay? Okay. Three happy points. Somebody say, I'm, I'm ready to be happy today. Come on. Come on. Fist bump somebody next to you. Say, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's get happy. All right? All right. All right. I know that's... I'm just trying to get you engaged, get you ready, okay? Here we go. Happy point number one. You ready? Everyone who follows Jesus will be persecuted. 
<laughs> well, there's at least one happy person about that in the place today. <laughs> Everyone who follows Jesus will be persecuted. That's happy point number one. Right out of the gate, Jesus is on the radar of the legalistic. Right out of the gate, he's on the radar of the Pharisees. They have already picked up that he is not following the rules and regulations and rituals that they think are so important. But the disciples haven't picked up on this yet. So Jesus is telling them right out of the gate, this is what's coming. He's saying if you live the Beatitudes, you will be persecuted. If you follow me, you will be persecuted. But you'll be happy. That's what he's saying. The definition of persecute is this. It's now several things, but they all mean the same thing. To make, to run, or flee, to put to flight, to drive away, to harass, to trouble, or to be maltreated. That's the definition of persecute, okay? So Jesus is saying it's about to get tough. It happened to the prophets who were before you. It will happen to me, and it's going to happen to you. See, we have this notion... And it's only in the West that this is preached. But we have this notion that once you get saved, everything's just going to work out for you. I hear the laughter already. Many of you have already figured out that's not how it works, right? In fact, in the American church, we're shocked when we go through difficulties. We're shocked. We have a flat tire and we think we're persecuted. It wasn't the nail in the road. It was the devil that did that, and the devil's after me. He's persecuting me. Yep, he's after me. He's persecuting me. The washer breaks down. Again, we're being persecuted. The power goes out in Fort Gratiot again. <laughs> ah, I see some of you live in Fort Gratiot. We're being persecuted. But I want to tell you something. Our view and our definition and our understanding of persecution in the American church is sorely lacking. We don't truly understand what persecution is. The rest of the world really gets what persecution is. The rest of the world who is following Jesus Christ, they understand about persecution. But here in America, we really don't get it. There's a big difference between the power going out or the washer breaking down or your car breaking down or something like that happening. There's a big difference between that and somebody holding a gun to your head and saying, deny Christ or you will die. There's a big difference. And so we need to get our perspective right. We need to understand what persecution is. But it's hard to do when you live in the American church because we don't see it very often. 2 Timothy 3.12 says this, yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Do you know what the Greek definition of the word everyone is? Everyone. That's it. Simple as that. Everyone. We love the word everyone when it's in scriptures like John 3.16. For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son so that, say it with me, Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Oh, we love that. We're like, I'm an everyone. Come on, I'm an every. Hey, I'm everyone. In that scripture, that's me. All right, I'm an everyone. Can I get a hanky wave today for everyone in that scripture right now? Come on. We love it, right? Oh, we love it, the word everyone in the, in the scripture, Matthew 7, 8. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Oh, we love that everyone, don't we? We love that everyone. That's me. We quote that one all the time. I'm the everyone. The Lord said, His Word said that everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds and everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Oh, Lord, I thank You for that, that I'm everyone. But we don't like everyone when it comes in Scriptures like 2 Timothy 3.12. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Do we understand? I wonder if we fully understand that if we're going to receive, well, this is good. Please listen to this. 
this is from Holy Spirit, if we're going to receive the everyone in John 3, 16, and if we're going to, to, to receive the everyone in Matthew 7, 8, then we have to receive the everyone in 2 Timothy 3, 12. If we're going to include ourselves in the everyone that will be saved when they call upon the name of Jesus, and if we're going to include ourselves in the everyone who asks receives, then we have to also include ourselves in the everyone who follows Christ will be persecuted because that's his word. But so many of us want to run away from that because we, 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 we're afraid of it, because we're afraid of what will happen. We're afraid of what that will look like. Maybe we've gotten our, our thoughts and our, our ideas of what this Christian life is supposed to be about has been twisted by the enemy. So nobody, nobody truly wants to say, oh, I want to suffer persecution, and especially in the American church. But do, did you know that in, in, the, in the Eastern church, in, in the churches around the world, outside the United States, you know that's a badge of honor. They count themselves worthy when they suffer persecution for the cause of Christ. None of these people who are suffering persecution and being killed for their faith in Christ, none of them go to their death regretting the decision that they made. None of them. They go to their death rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for the cause of Christ. Okay, happy point number two. Here we go. Persecution is part of the process. Oh, Pastor Bill, these aren't happy points. They are. Persecution is part of the process. John 15, 18, Jesus said, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own, but because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember that word that I, that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. If we are following Jesus Christ, if we're going to follow him, then we're going to suffer persecution at some point. Because persecution is part of the process. It's part of the process of following Jesus. Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. In other words, he is saying, it's part of the process. When you decide to go down this narrow path after me, you will face persecution at some point. The world will ridicule you and despise you and say all kinds of evil against you because of me. But many so-called believers do not want to face persecution. So they follow Jesus from a great distance. Many act like Peter did when Jesus was dragged off to stand before the Sanhedrin. And as they took Jesus away, Peter followed from a great distance. And when they took Jesus in, he st- stood off in the, in the distance and, and he listened to what was taking place. And somebody said to him, You look familiar. Aren't you one of his followers? Haven't I seen you before? And Peter uh, scoffed at them. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know this man. See, when faced with persecution, even though Peter loved Jesus, when faced with persecution, he allowed fear to overrule and override him. He was afraid of what might happen. He was afraid of the persecution to come. He didn't understand that if he were to, 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 to uh, stand up for the truth of Christ, if he were to stand up for him, then he would be happy in those moments. Now, now listen to me. Listen to what Holy Spirit speaking to you today. See, Peter stood at a distance, and then he denied Christ, but he was sorrowful after he denied Christ. Oh, he was saved from the persecution of the moment, but in his heart he was broken. Happiness comes when we stand up for Christ. Happiness comes in the persecution. Many people just want to follow from a distance and they're afraid of that persecution if they truly stand up, but some are afraid to stand up for truth because they aren't living it. There is sin in their heart and they haven't let God deal with it yet. So because of that, they're afraid to stand up for truth because they're afraid of what it might make them look like. 
We all know it. If you've been in church any length of time, Many are afraid to separate themselves from the obscene talk, the dirty jokes, or the racial comments, or the partying, or the lukewarm gray areas of their life. Many are afraid to separate themselves from that because they're afraid of what it might look like. They're afraid of the persecution that they might face. Even if it's just minor persecution at the workplace and you're standing around the water cooler and people are telling a dirty joke and instead of walking away, Instead of standing up for the truth of God's word, you stand there and you laugh because you're afraid of what they might say to you. You're afraid of how they might treat you after that because you've seen how they've treated people that stood up for Christ before. I want to say this to you. I don't want you to write this down or I want you to take note of it because this is very important, this statement. In order to make a difference in the world, you have to be different. I'm going to say it again. In order to make a difference in this world, you have to be different. God called us out of the world. We are not of this world any longer. He called us out of the world. I have had people tell me, Bill, you need to lighten up. You push too hard. You need to just back off. You're so super spiritual. You need to lighten up. And I tell them, I'm I'm not trying to push too hard. And I'm not trying to be super spiritual. I'm trying to follow Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I'm trying to stand up for the truth of God's Word. I'm trying to live a righteous and holy life. And if we do it in love, if we love people, and if we lead with love, we're still going to be persecuted. But it's going to be good. We're going to be happy. We're going to be happy. All right. Happy point number three. You know what? Before I get to that, let me give you this one quote from Charles Spurgeon. This is really good. Charles Spurgeon said, God had a son that had no fault, but he never had a son that was not found fault with. God himself was slandered in paradise by Satan. Let us not expect, therefore, to escape from that venomous tongue. I want to say this to you today. Persecution comes through people, but persecution is not from people. Did you hear me? Persecution may come through people, but it's not from people. We do not fight against flesh and blood. So quit fighting people. We're fighting the demonic forces in the unseen world. We're fighting Satan and his demons. That's who we're fighting. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood enemies, but against spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. We're fighting against those those enemies, so let's fight the right enemy. Amen? And when persecution comes... Don't be surprised and don't fight back against people. Happy point number three. This is the last one. Happy are the persecuted. Happy are the persecuted. Now, you're ready to get happy? Really happy? Jesus said, I promise you this. If you follow me, you will be happy when you are poor in spirit. You'll be happy when you mourn. You'll be happy when you're meek. You'll be happy when you hunger and thirst for righteousness. You'll be happy when you are merciful. You'll be happy when you're pure in heart. You'll be happy when you're peacemakers. And you'll be happy when you are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Matthew 5.12, Jesus said, Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You know what this actually means, the rejoice and be glad? It actually means leap for joy. Leap for joy. Jesus is saying, when you you do these things, when you're poor in spirit, and when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, and when you're meek, and when you mourn, and you do all these things, and when you're persecuted, leap for joy, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you, and they will persecute me, and they will persecute you. There are so many believers 
who aren't happy today? Is it possible that we're not happy because we're not persecuted? And is it possible that we're not persecuted because we're not taking a stand? Thomas Watson said, the apostles went away rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Christ. That they were graced so far as to be disgraced for the name of Christ. They went away rejoicing. They were leaping for joy because they were counted worthy to be disgraced for the name of Christ. Hebrews 12, 1-4 says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily tangles us or trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not given your lives in your struggle against sin. Let me end this today and close with this by telling you about somebody who did give his life in the struggle against the enemy. And it's found in Acts chapter 7, verse 54. This is the account of what happened to Stephen. The Jewish leaders were infuriated by Stephen's accusation and they shook their fist at him in rage. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God as he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. I want to tell you two things about this today. I believe with all of my heart that people are never closer to Jesus than when they're being persecuted. I believe that people never have a clearer picture of Jesus than when they're going through persecution. I believe they see him more clearly than they ever have before. And I also believe that they're at the happiest moments in their life when they're being persecuted. The second thing is this. In this scripture, we see that Jesus is standing. This is the only time in New Testament that we see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. All the other times he's seated. This is what I believe happened. I believe that Jesus was seated at God's right hand And I believe he's sitting down there and he saw what was about to happen with Stephen. He saw them leading leading Stephen away to be stoned. And as he saw them leading Stephen away, I believe Jesus stood up. And he walked to the edge of the throne. And he looked at Stephen and he looked back at the father and he said, Father, do you see him? Do you see him? He's taking a stand for you, Father. He's taking a stand for me. Do you see him, Father? Well done. Well done, Stephen. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I believe that Stephen got a standing ovation from Jesus. And I believe that every person that is persecuted for Christ gets the same. I believe Jesus was standing there going, that's the way. He stood up. Jesus stood up for Stephen because Stephen stood up for him. I could tell you so many other stories about people who were persecuted for Jesus, for taking a stand for him, for embracing the process of persecution. Folks, I'm telling you today, it's part of the process. Jesus said, you will be persecuted if you follow me. You will. But let me just tell you about one more. Queen Mary I was one of the most wicked rulers ever. She murdered hundreds of people, all Bible translators or preachers, from 1553 to 1558. She is actually where we got the term Bloody Mary from. But the first one she wanted to kill, his name was John Rogers. She put out a worldwide search and found him in Geneva where he had just finished 
translating the Bible. She brought him back. She had him tied to, uh, tried as a heretic. Here's the interesting thing, though, about the reporter that wrote the story on it. He said, as he was walking to the stake, his wife and children were walking beside him. And he said, there was such joy in the family like I had never seen before. It appeared as if they were going to a wedding, not a funeral. They tied him to the stake. They gave him one last chance to renounce the Bible. He wouldn't do it. But before he could even answer, they said, will you renounce the Bible? And his son cried out, don't do it, Dad. Don't do it. And of course he didn't. And they burned him at the stake. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 22, and all nations will hate you because you are my followers. But everyone who endures to the end will be saved. Will you stand with me today? Just close your eyes with me right now. I just want you to think about your life, where you stand with God today. Think about your life. Think where you're at right now. What is God doing in your heart, in your life? What is he calling you to? Where do you stand with him? Father, help us right now. Holy Spirit, speak to us. We, we welcome you right now. We invite you to come and speak to us right now. Every heart, every life right now. Jesus. I want the prayer team to come. And this is what I want to ask you. Keep your eyes closed for a moment. I want to ask you this. If after hearing this message today, you're saying, Bill, man, I don't, I'm following Jesus from a distance or I'm not even really following Him. And I know it. The Holy Spirit has spoken in my heart right now and I know, I know that I need to make this right with God today. I know I need to do something about it. And I want to pray and I want God to do what He desires to do in my life. I want to follow Him closely from this day forward. If that's you, I want you to step forward right now and step in front of one of these prayer team members. Come on. Come right now. Come. Come on. You might say, Bill, there's sin in my life. I know there is. I've been living in sin. I, there's some sin in my life. I need to get it out right now. I want you to come. Come on. Come on, keep coming. Come on, I know there's more. Come on. You're not following closely and you know you need to. Today you want to turn it around. I want to follow Jesus closer than I ever have. I want to give Him everything. No more secret places. No more secret places. I'm going to give all today. I'm going to give it all today. Come on. Come on, if you don't need this, I want you to close your eyes and pray. Come on, church, you need to pray. You need to pray. Souls hang in the balance. You need to pray. Come on, if you're saved, pray. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we need you. We need you. Break every chain. Father, break every chain. Break every shackle right now. In the name of Jesus, break every shackle. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes. Second thing I want to ask you is this. If during this message today you felt Holy Spirit tugging on you, speaking to you, saying, I need you to go farther, I need you to go deeper, you know that you, you need to go give more. You've been afraid of persecution. You've been afraid of what might happen if you really step up for Jesus. And today you want to say, I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way. I'm going to step up. No matter what it looks like, 
I trust the Lord and I want to be happy. Right now, raise your hand. Come on. Raise your hand if that's you. Keep them up. Keep them up. Raise them up. Come on. Raise them up. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person that has their hands raised in this place. God, do what you desire to do in their hearts and lives. Father, I pray that you break every chain of bondage. Father, I pray that you break the spirit of fear off of their life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you give them courage and strength. Make them bold by the power of your spirit, Lord. That they would walk with you and for you, God, and stand up for you no matter what it looks like in this world that they're living in. God, I thank you that as persecution comes, Father, that they will be happy and they will rejoice For great, Father, is your name, and great are you, Father, in their hearts and lives right now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. There's a place rich.